hey guys and welcome back to my channel i hope you're all are feeling wonderful today so today we're going to be discussing the case of beverly carter but of course first let's get to know who she was a little bit so beverly was 50 year old at the time of her death um but her life was not always stable and perfect during the first half of her 35 years marriage her and her husband would often have to live with other family members or they would be in the position where they had to live in like small trailers and stuff like that they would move pretty often because her husband would work construction and beverly was basically a stay-at-home mom at the time so because she was taking care of the kids and the husband was paying the bills she basically just had to go whatever he had to work until she eventually found a job as a receptionist so later on in the early 2000s that's when she actually got interested in the real estate business to the point where she actually became really good at it. She was actually one of the top sellers. Unfortunately, in 2003, she lost um, her son, Christopher, because he was actually killed in a car accident, which was so devastating for her and for her family. But of course, her career was still growing and she was a multi-million dollar producer. So after so many years of tragedy and not having enough money, they were finally able to enjoy life. They were finally financially stable and just enjoying the little things. So after a decade of experiencing her career, obviously she was a woman just working by herself. So she started being a lot more cautious when she was meeting potential buyers. So what she would do is that she would write down the names and the phone numbers in a little appointment book. She would always make sure to tell someone the address of a home that she was going to show. And of course, she would also tell them the time that she was going to be there. On September 25th, she wrote down the name and the phone number of a person who was a potential cash buyer. But little did she know the name and phone number were completely fake. Around 5.30, she called her husband to give him the address and to also let him know that she was planning on showing a couple of other houses that evening, but she never returned home. Now, of course, Beverly was a woman that worked in the real estate business. That means she was doing long hours. And so the first couple of hours that she did not return home, being that she called her husband to let him know that she was showing more houses that evening, you know, it was nothing out of the ordinary until he realized she was actually not coming back. So that is what gives him the idea of showing up to the last address that she gave him. So when he goes, he finds that her car was parked outside. And he noticed that as he was approaching the house, the door was also unlocked. So he starts searching inside the house, but it was empty. Obviously, that's when he noticed that something is off and he proceeds to call 911. So the day after, the police actually starts looking for Beverly. And there were also a couple of real estate agents that were circling the area just to help to look for information that might help the search. Some of those agents actually knew Beverly. One of them was Stacy and she had actually worked with Beverly for about six years. Um, some offices even shut down their office for the day just to make sure that everybody was helping out. On September 27, which is two days after she disappeared, basically, there was more than 100 people volunteering to search by foot. The police kept searching the area, questioning people that lived close by to see if anyone had seen anything or heard anything. Honestly, so many people were given it their all to find Beverly to make sure that she would turn home. Their expectations was actually to find her okay. But of course, everybody knew that time was of the essence. On September 28th, there was actually a warrant issued for an arrest of a suspect. The suspect was Aaron Lewis, who was 33 years old at the time. Aaron became a person of interest when he was involved in a vehicle crash and at some point he made the cops believe that he was getting a CT scan while he was in the hospital and just disappear. But at least they knew what he looked like and Aaron also had facial injuries from the car accident 
so he was pretty easy to identify. At the time, the police did not want to release the information about how Aaron got linked to the crime, but while looking for him, they did say they expected for him to be armed. They were not sure, but they would pretty much expect for him to be. Of course, they were just looking for him. They did not consider for him to be dangerous based on the nature of the charge. And of course, because they did not have any proof that he actually had Beverly, there was no other lead on Beverly's case. So the police really needed to determine whether he was guilty or not. On September 30th, they were able to locate Beverly's body overnight. She was actually buried in a shallow grave on some property in Kabot, which was more than 20 miles from when she originally disappeared. Aaron was actually arrested for capital murder and questioned for over 12 hours. But after questioning him for 12 hours, he basically confessed to kidnapping Beverly, but he did not want to say where her body was, at least not during questioning. So that was actually what made the police work a little bit harder and started putting two and two together and they were able to find Beverly in the property. When Aaron was taken from jail into the sheriff's office, he basically said that he did not kill Beverly, but instead described her killer as a woman that worked alone, some bridge broker. He said that he was very sorry, which let me tell you, he was a little too late for that. We don't need a sorry anymore. And he admits again that he kidnapped her. But of course, there's so many times that strongly points him to everything in this case. And yet so many unanswered questions like why did he pick her? Thankfully, later on, he was held um, without bail. On October 30th, the police actually arrested his wife and charged her with capital murder and kidnapping so much from just a woman that worked alone, a woman that he claimed just to be some rich broker. Her name was actually Crystal, who was a 41-year-old at the time. The police said this investigation has never stopped and investigators have continued to work on it. On June 20th, Bill James was actually appointed to represent Aaron Lewis because Lewis had been representing himself since he decided to fire his lawyer in the beginning. Lewis was asking many questions about how to write down his own motions and was complaining about how prosecutors were not cooperating with him and talked about how he didn't have any computer access to review the evidence against him. Later on, his wife pleaded guilty to the murder and kidnapping and was actually sentenced to 30 years. Prosecutor Mariani said that she strongly believed at the time that the couple just wanted to demand a ransom from Beverly's husband, but when things went wrong, he actually decided to kill her by grabbing her head in a duct tape. Louis' wife said that her husband was behind the whole plan to kidnap her after he had selected a few potential victims in the area and eventually narrow it down to real estate based on the perception of their financial wealth. She later explains that the goal was only to get $100,000 but in reality she just wanted Beverly gone and the main reason she did not call for help was more related to actually getting caught than the money but Aaron insisted that the murder of Beverly was simply a mistake. He even wrote on his fake Facebook page and very details about what route he took driving Beverly to his home, what her naked body looked like, and how he disposed of her after saying that she was accidentally suffocated during a sexual encounter with his wife. He also claims that he does not remember which software he used to mimic her voice in a voicemail sent to her husband, in which he said, don't call the police, it could be bad. Now, the death of Beverly just brought up so many things that were not necessary, at least not for her kids to hear. So her relationship with her husband was also not as perfect as they thought it was. He later on confessed that at some point it got a little bit physical and he had punched her while he was intoxicated. And he also confessed to having an affair during their 35 years, Mary. Thankfully, to give this family some peace of mind after everything they had been through after losing a mother, a wife, a grandmother, Aaron Lewis was found guilty of capital murder and the kidnapping of Beverly. Later on, Beverly's son, who was honestly as heartbroken as you respect him to me, everything he was posting on social media and, and just seeing him 
going through the trial and everything was honestly devastating he later told the jurors about how heartbroken he was and his family too honestly this took a year but the part he says that hurt him the most and it's honestly completely understandable he said that it was the fact that aaron lewis was telling people that he was sexually involved with his mother he says that his mother loved his dad very much they had an amazing relationship to his understanding he started crying explaining how his mother's presence would fill up the room and of course how much love she had for all of her grandchildren she was there teaching them how to ride bikes she was there teaching them how to tie their own shoes and they would eat a whole box of little dewey's cake he cried while remembering all the good years they had with his mother and how the world was about to be a much darker place without her